Welcome to this week's legislative report. A proposed constitutional amendment to require state reimbursement of unfunded mandates has been sent to the floor for full debate by the legislature. As introduced, it would forbid the legislature from creating or imposing increased levels of service after 2024 without reimbursing local governments. A government, military, and veterans affairs committee amendment would rephrase it as a requirement rather than a prohibition and set a 2025 start date. If passed by the legislature, it would be presented to voters at the November 2024 general election. At the public hearing last week, county officials, NACO, and representatives of other political subdivisions testified in strong support of the measure. There were no opponents. LR1CA was introduced by Senator Carol Blood. Senator Blood has been a strong advocate for local government and introduced a similar concept last year as LR263CA. The first cloture vote of the session was held on Friday on a bill to allow concealed carrying of handguns. After eight hours of debate, LB77 was amended and advanced from the first round of debate with 36 votes in favor of the bill. 33 votes are needed to end a filibuster by enacting cloture. Committees held hearings this week on voter ID and election issues, increased court fees for indigent defense, marriage licenses, and conditional use permits. The Revenue Committee heard measures on consumption taxes, special valuation of ag land within city limits, and changing valuation methods for schools and commercial property. The Government Committee heard a bill to increase the number of free hours of searching and copying public records from four hours to eight hours. NACO testified in opposition. No committee action has been reported on any of these bills. Next Monday, the Transportation and Telecommunications Committee will hear LB 646, which would allow wireless surcharge fees to increase to $1 and direct the Public Service Commission to maximize operational support for all public safety answering points in the state. On Tuesday, committees will hear a bill introduced on behalf of NACO to extend funding for the County Bridge Match Program by $8 million per year for the next five years, and another bill to allow counties to use credit unions for depositories. On Thursday, the Revenue Committee will hear a bill introduced on behalf of NACO to set a five-year cutoff date for claiming the refundable income tax credit. 